General Workplace Safety Risk Assessment Risk Assessment The Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 requires the employer to arrange for a competent person or persons to carry out a detailed risk assessment. It should identify all workplace hazards, quantify the risks and introduce control measures to reduce the risk of injury or illness to the workforce. If more than five persons are employed, the assessment must be recorded. Other legislation also requires employers to conduct specific risk assessments for specific hazards, for example, manual handling, hazardous substances, display screen equipment and fire. A risk assessment is simply a careful examination of what could cause harm to people so you can consider whether you have taken enough precautions or should do more to prevent harm. Risk assessments will help identify what could go wrong, how likely it is to happen and how serious the result could be. The employer then needs to put control measures in place to prevent the problem occurring. Hazard and risk have two quite distinct meanings. Hazard, something that has the potential to cause harm or damage. Risk, the likelihood of the harm or damage being realised. For example, a bottle of bleach contains a hazard, but locked in the cupboard, it does little harm. The risk increases when the bottle is used. Five steps of a risk assessment. One, identify the hazards. Examples include slips and trips. Consider floor surfaces, housekeeping and different floor levels. Working at height. For example, decorators using ladders and construction workers on scaffolding. Fire hazards. Example, flammable substances and sources of ignition. Moving vehicles, for example, forklift trucks and reversing lorries. Dust, such as wood dust in a sawmill or flour in a bakery. Hot liquids, for example, pans of hot water or oil in a kitchen. Two, decide on who may be harmed and how. It is not just the person conducting the task that may be affected, but anyone nearby. For example, builders working on scaffolding above a public walkway may injure pedestrians if equipment or materials are dropped. Some employees will need a separate risk assessment, for example, those who are more vulnerable, such as pregnant workers and young, inexperienced staff. 3. Evaluate the risk and decide on precautions. Consider the consequences of injury or harm. Could someone be seriously injured or killed? Could lots of people be affected? Is it likely to occur? If the answer is yes, then these hazards should be addressed as a priority and further controls put in place to reduce the risk to an acceptable level using the hierarchy of control. 4. Record your significant findings and implement them. It is a legal requirement that businesses with five or more staff formally record their significant findings. It is important not only to implement the controls you identified, making sure staff are trained in the new procedures, but to check to make sure they are being followed correctly. 5. Review and update risk assessments. Reviews should take place when procedures are revised, workplace layout is reorganised, new machinery is installed, an accident or near miss occurs, the law changes. Reviews should also take place on a regular basis, possibly annually, just to make sure nothing has been missed and to identify new techniques or scientific developments that could be introduced to improve safety. Hierarchy of control. 
When considering control measures, there is a scale of preference. The higher up the chart, the better of more preferable the method. Some measures will work for some tasks or activities and some for others, but not all will be suitable. 1. Eliminate. If something is hazardous, the most effective option is to remove it. 2. Substitute. Can something safer be substituted for it? 3. Engineering controls. Examples include equipment, using work equipment as a preventative measure, for example, to prevent falls from height. Guards, placing or replacing guarding controls. Insulation, an excellent method of noise control. Isolation, separating the worker from the hazard. Ventilation, removing hazardous dust and fumes from the workplace using additional machinery if necessary. Maintenance, making sure all equipment is well serviced and maintained. 4. Administrative controls. Procedures needed to work safely, for example, limiting the amount of time the worker is exposed to a hazard, increasing safety signage, conducting risk assessments. 5. Personal protective equipment. PPE. Equipment or clothing provided to protect an employee against risk to their health and safety must only be used once all other measures have been tried and found unsuitable. Competent person. A person who has sufficient training, experience, knowledge or other relevant qualities to enable them to undertake a task or job. Risk assessments are used to look for possible causes of accidents and to assess how bad the results may be.